army units continue to make progress in several areas, eliminating dozens of terrorists. Six Egyptian soldiers were killed in Sinai over the last 36 hours. Palestinian organizations were against Israeli attempts to Judaize occupied Jerusalem. Gentlemen, I'm Mirado Krikorian from the News Center in Damascus. Former Italian Foreign Minister Franco Frattini has said the West is still cautious about offering weapons to the Syrian opposition because it fears such weapons would come to the hands of extremist groups. In an interview with the Italian Aki Agency, Frattini said Italy was right in making no contribution to the armament of the Syrian opposition for this reason. Italian Foreign Minister Emma Bonino had affirmed last month that her government opposed arming the opposition because such step would blow up the situation in the region. Bonino also stressed the Italian government's stand about the presence of no alternative to a peaceful solution to the crisis in Syria. Six citizens fell martyrs today and 19 others injured when terrorists launched mortar shells on Berzer residential area in Damascus. A police source mentioned that the shell hit a vehicle carrying workers to the scientific research center in Berza, killing and wounding dozens. The source added that the terrorist attack caused material damages in the area. In Damascus suburbs, an armed terrorist gang assassinated head of a Zabadani municipality, Majid Tinawi, and member of the National Reconciliation Committee in Damascus suburbs, Ghassan al Hajj Hamoud, in the city of Zabadani, as they were coming out of a meeting held for national reconciliation in the area. In Dar'a, our armed forces also killed and wounded several terrorists and destroyed their criminal tools in al gharia al sharqiya Al-Hiraq, Izra, Al-Mshifra, and al Harra near al jdera checking point, killing and injuring a large number of them. Among the terrorists killed, Ammar Jamal Awad was identified. In downtown Dar'a and Wusra Sham, our armed forces eliminated a number of terrorists. Among them, Muhammad Khalil al-Sawalih and Ashraf Sulaiman al-Drubi were identified. Several workers were injured by missile shells fired by terrorists on Homs Refinery, the workers' residential complex, and the general refining establishment. A source at the Minister of Oil and Mineral Wealth said the attack caused the injury of a number of workers and inflicted material damage on an oil tank and the building of the establishment. In Homs and its suburbs, our army units targeted terrorist hideouts in Al Qusur near Al Masabir, as well as Khadija Al Kubra School, Al Qarabis, Al Ghouta Farms, Jurat Al Shayyah near Al Amal Hospital, the city center building, Bab Hood, Al Warsha, and Wadi Sayh, killing and injuring a number of terrorists. Other army units eliminated terrorists and wounded others in Bab Sba'a, Al Wa'ar, Al Hule, Kisin, Al Rastan, Talbisa, Al Dar Al Kabira, Ghanto, and Al Ghajar, and destroyed their criminal tools. In Bab Hood Quarter in Homs City, army units continued to make progress clearing new buildings and streets of terrorist groups and killing dozens of them, including foreign nationalities. Army units chased terrorists and took control on new building blocks, which were occupied by al-Nusra terrorists following fierce clashes. The gunmen were stationed on roofs of buildings and houses, erecting barricades for attacking citizens. The fall of al Khalidiyah had a devastating impact on the gunmen who tried to flee to nearby areas through narrow tunnels. The Syrian Arab army is fully determined to chase those terrorists and clear the area of their criminal acts. An Egyptian soldier was shot dead in the Sinai Peninsula, raising the 36-hour death toll of security forces in the area to six. 
Medical and security sources said armed men attacked a military building in Al Arish, the regional capital of North Sinai, killing one soldier. Another soldier and three policemen were also killed in Sinai in the past 36 hours. At least 20 policemen and 11 soldiers have been killed since the ousting of Morsi. In Iraq, nine Iraqis were killed and 11 others injured in two separate terrorist bombings north and west of Baghdad. Iraqi police said that a suicide bomber blew himself up as he approached a mosque at al Husseiniya, north of Baghdad, killing seven people and injuring 11 others. In western Baghdad, a similar bombing near a mosque killed two worshippers yesterday night. The Islamic State in Iraq and the Levant group, which is linked with the terrorist Al-Qaeda, had claimed responsibility for a series of car bombings last Monday, which killed at least 60 people and injured more than and 200 others. As the Iraqi Interior Ministry said that Iraq is facing a war carried out by sectarian terrorist parties in order to reproduce sectarian civil war between the components of the Iraqi people. Iraqi army destroyed five hideouts of Al-Qaeda in the areas of Qabr al-Abd and the left coast in Mosul, as well as in Al-Jazeera in Takrit, killing 10 terrorists and arresting 26 others. The Iraqi army also defused three car bombs and seized two vehicles carrying weapons. The Iraqi armed forces also found five caches for weapons that included dozens of explosive belts, anti-armor rockets, explosive devices, pistols, rifles, and large quantities of ammunition and explosives. Finally, in occupied Palestine, Al-Aqsa Establishment for Palestinian Heritage and Waqfs warned against the dangers of implementing an Israeli settlement's construction plan in occupied Jerusalem just a few meters away from Al-Aqsa Mosque. The establishment said in a statement that such a project aims at Judaizing ancient Jerusalem and the Islamic sites surrounding the mosque in order to distort the Arab and Islamic identity. Meanwhile, Israeli occupation troops broke in the towns of the West Bank and arrested six Palestinians as settlers attacked Palestinian workers in the city of Nablus. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Now to latest business and market news with Vani Genjian, but after a short break. Stay tuned.